System charging. Hey, let's take a look at um, an R22 system, fixed orifice and a low charge, and see what's going on with this refrigerant in the refrigeration cycle. And we're only going to look at the evaporator side at, the, at this point. So for a quick review, this is our, our diagram from Module 3. And in a system that is properly charged, you do have a, a solid column of liquid refrigerant that enters the metering device. Remember, this is fixed orifice. And it flashes over into liquid and vapor in the evaporator coil, and it's at its saturation point. And these coils are designed so that when it's pro the system is operating properly and charged properly, that the refrigerant is at its saturation point through the, major the majority of the coil. And it's designed to do this so that it can pick up the maximum amount of heat it can from the indoor air that's being blown across it by the, the um, air handler. And remember when, when refrigerant is at its saturation point, it is changing state from liquid to vapor whenever you add heat. And that takes a tremendous amount of heat energy to do that change of state. So that's how we get our cooling. So this coil is designed so that you get all of the cooling that you need through the majority of the coil and just at the very tail end of this coil it's it's designed so that we no longer have um, saturated refrigerant at some point it's it turns into 100 percent vapor and at that point uh, effective cooling just it stops in the coil and it the uh, refrigerant the vapor starts to pick up sensible heat and this is it's designed to do this so that as this refrigerant travels back to the compressor that we have 100 percent vapor hitting this compressor so that we don't damage it it's also designed by the manufacturer that in this um, illustration for a 75 degree indoor air temperature and a 95 degree outdoor air temperature we have 20 degrees of superheat so we know that at 20 degrees of superheat, we have removed all of the heat energy that this coil was designed to remove, and that we now have enough sensible heat to make sure that we have 100% vapor going back to the compressor. So let's look at what happens when um, the system is undercharged. So we have an under undercharged system. There's not enough refrigerant. We still have this solid column of refrigerant coming into the fixed orifice and it flashes over to saturated refrigerant. And it is changing state and absorbing heat just as it was designed to do and is pulling out heat from the indoor air. And it's going to do so, but it, at a certain point, not at the design point, but at where, but because we're undercharged, we, we now have boiled off all the refrigerant, it's changed its state completely from liquid to vapor earlier on in the coil than it should be. So at this point in the coil it starts picking up sensible heat. So rather than um, changing state through this coil it's picking up sensible heat. So it could pick up 15 degrees of additional sensible heat before it hits the point it was designed to. Then it picks up another 20 degrees of sensible heat going back to the compressor, our superheat is now, instead of being 20, is now 35 degrees. And this indicates a problem. The effective cooling of the system has now been reduced from this point and this point to this point and this point. And now we have reduced cooling and increased superheat going through the system. Now as you as you if you once you've determined that your system is undercharged then you need to bring the system back up to manufacturer specifications. So if if in this undercharged system if the refrigerant has all changed state at this point but we need to get it to this point, which is 20 degrees of superheat, you're going to start to incrementally add 
refrigerant. So the system's running and you're going to add some refrigerant. Let the system stabilize and you're going to measure your superheat. Remember we started out with 35 degrees of superheat and we're going to add refrigerant slowly and we're going to continue to measure superheat as you add and refrigerant. So you're going to add refrigerant, measure superheat, add refrigerant, measure, measure superheat. Eventually this superheat is going to start to decrease from 35 to 32 to 30 and you're going to work, work your way down the system as you add refrigerant and you're starting to you start to move that point where the refrigerant turns into vapor further and further down the coil until you hit 20 degrees of superheat and then you know you have the system charged properly. Here's one thing that I've noticed. First of all, if if you're at this point and you're adding refrigerant and you add a little bit of refrigerant, you're not going to see a, a huge change in, in superheat at all. It's just going it, to, you may not even notice it at all. Then you're going to hit the next this next point and there there may be a subtle change in in the superheat and temperatures and pressures then you get to this point and it is again incremental and small and you start to wonder what's going on now as you start to approach the point at where it's properly charged and I'm not certain why this is it the temperatures and pressures begin to change much quicker and it's really easy to overshoot your charge because it's been going so slow to begin with then you get to a certain point and that everything comes online rather quickly it's almost like there's this tipping point where um, you know the refrigerant and, and you, you just hit that sweet spot where it, it everything falls in the line and if you're not careful you're gonna overshoot it pretty quick so just remember when you're adding refrigerant there's gonna be a slow change and as you get closer and closer to the proper charging point the pressures and temperatures and superheat are going to um, change quicker so just make sure you pay attention to that okay so the thing to remember a, a system that has is low in charge results in high superheat and we'll take a look in our next video at um, a system that is overcharged and see what that does to the superheat. All right, any questions, um, message me in our learning management system or send me an email.